And uh, since re re Hey there, real gamers and gatekeepers, Retro Rob here, and I've got another interesting device for you, at least for you Americans out there. I think this is a more common thing in the EU than it is here, uh, but it was only recently made available here at all, and I think it's only through one importer on Amazon. But anyway, this is the Atari Pong Mini Arcade, and I gotta tell ya, it's got big holes in it. What the heck, man? Ugh. You know, I pre-planned this so I had the right angle when I put it up here so that the green screen effect wouldn't do that. But, you know, sure enough, it's going to. Anyway, uh, this is not the original, like, beginning I had recorded. I've switched systems for doing my recording and uh, I, I accidentally wiped out the original. So, you're getting this. It's great. It's amazing. And it's going to start with... The front of the box. Pong, the number one Atari classic. Atari Mini Arcade, 01. Maybe there'll be more of these someday. Pong by Blaze. You might remember Blaze from the awesome Evercade retro handheld console. Maybe you don't. If you don't, you definitely should check this one out. But not today, because we're rolling onto the back of the box. Note the unique paddle control scheme. It's not that unique if you grew up with Pong games, but I guess I'll let it slide. That said, just because it's not really unique doesn't mean it's not awesome. 12 classic games included. Two-player action in Pong. Note the specificity there. Hmm. Full color, 2.8 inch screen. Powered by four AA batteries or micro USB cable. I like that they give you the choice there. That's nice. Volume control and, of course, a headphone jack. Of course. I can't help but notice that there's no American flag there. Well, I can fix that. America. All right, the 12 games are Pong, Warlords, Breakout, Steeplechase, Circus Atari, Night Driver, Off the Wall. That one I haven't played yet. Street Racer, Super Breakout, Canyon Bomber, which is great, Video Olympics, and Demons to Diamonds. What's in Rob's box? Let's unbox this thing. Like a boss. Or like a really good employee. Alright. Looking at the top. There's a nice piece of... Wow, that... Took a beating. Here's the device itself. I'll put that aside. But you can see it. Um, down at the bottom there is a manual. And that's about it. So there's a manual. I like it. It's a retro looking manual. It is black and white. In, oh. <laughs> there. It is black and white inside. Looks like it has descriptions for all the games in it. Not real long of a description for each one, but at least it has it. And it lists six of the game as bonus games. So we're not gonna give you instructions for that. Fair enough. And then it's got it in different languages. All right, so not a lot there. Let's take a look at this device itself. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in. All right, let's take a look at the Pong system itself. First interesting thing is this Atari logo at the top. At first I thought it might be a decal, but it, it isn't. This is just a, uh, this is just part of the mold. It's kind of weird. Um, Atari prints on there, very nice, looks good. Now looking at the deck, we've got a reset, select, and start button. Also have a serve button for Pong. I'm gonna guess that doubles as a fire button as needed for different games. Got a player one and player two paddle. It's got a little bit of a clickiness to it. Hear that? You can hear it. Going on to the front, we have your on off button. It has this wood grain decal on the front of it. The decals are fairly thick and feel nice. Uh, fit and finish note. Notice how this trim comes out a little bit. That's not great. Does not thrill me. Uh, it should It should all fit the same. It should look like that. 
instead it looks like that so imperfection there next looking at the side profile this thing looks great I mean that looks really nice you've got a decent decal here uh, notice how the trim has this edge that comes out a little bit that's actually really good shows a lot of precision there that's a really good job I like the look of it uh, very nice fit and finish there looking around to the back we have a volume up volume down space for headphones right in the center why I don't know speaker port and uh, you can use a USB cord to charge that looks like it's a I don't think it's USB-C going on to the bottom it is not a USB-C I can tell you already okay next we've got two rubber pads on the bottom I always like when they do that battery door cover and that's about it I think we can power it on and take a look let's back that up now we can power it on and take a look all right so of course you'll uh, need a screwdriver to get the battery cover door off which of course is a safety thing because you know the kid might eat that they're not gonna eat the battery door okay fine they're gonna eat the batteries you're gonna if your kids gonna eat the batteries maybe you should watch your kid maybe 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 that's how we used to call the herd back in the day. You ever think about that, huh? Get the hell off my lawn. Hitting select will page from game page to game page and then using the left spinner or paddle, whatever you want to call it, we'll select between them. Hit start to play. Press serve to serve. It makes a great Atari noise. What? <laughs> Do you see that tip off? That's crazy. So it takes about uh, a revolution and a half to get from the bottom to the top of the screen, which means this game can be really hard if you're on a table behind a camera like I am but anyway it does play a pretty decent game of pong this would be especially fun with two players because this is the game that allows you to do that let's go on and here's breakout I want to apologize for my somewhat imperfect screen recording technology I think I mentioned that this game is probably best played on your lap that's definitely true but anyway plays a fine game of breakout even if I don't all right here we have super breakout by the way much like the original Atari 2600 there's of course a working select button so you can choose between the different variations on games and then you hit start you can start the game and then I'm going to serve and I'm gonna have a terrible time seeing the ball because to give you a decent color I really gotta crank it <laughs> I can barely see Oh, that's sad. No, you're not. So anyway, if you like Super Breakout, I don't think you're going to have a problem with this implementation. It plays pretty darn well. And it's quite a bit of fun. even if it's a bit of a yawn to watch. All right, let's move on. All right, so this is hockey, and it's from the Video Olympics game, which is, I think, the third or fourth game on the list. 
forth. And it works fine with two players. Which is great, because you can only play this as a two-player game. But it is one of the better two-player games for the Atari 2600. It really is a lot of fun, has a lot of uh, variants, this variant being my favorite. And uh, yeah, it works fine. So that is good, because they claim that only Pong was two-player. But come to find out, you definitely can play Video Olympics, no problem. To quit out of a game, you can hit this reset button right here. Circus Atari! I'm gonna have a terrible time seeing this. And if you watch my video on this topic, you'll know I'm terrible at this game. Terrible. There we go. Try to pop all the balloons before your little guy dies. Oop. Ah! Oh. All right, let's go on. Here we have Off the Wall, which is, it's a breakout style game. And it was made in, I think, 1989. It was one of the last, like, games that were officially released for the Atari 2600 uh, during its lifespan. And it's actually pretty good, but you're going to need some focus, which is something I just don't have right now. But neat little game. It's going to get kind of fast, though, for this controller. So I kind of worry about that. Yeah, I'd have to have it in my uh, lap. It's also very loud, which is kind of cool, really. All right, let's go on. Canyon Bomber. Uh, this was a game that my uncle and I played a whole lot of. It was a great two-player game. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to play this two-player because you need two buttons to do that. So this is gonna be one of those games that isn't really gonna work as a two-player. But if you look below, I'm basically trying to bomb out all the rocks in the canyon. Whoever knocks out the most of these rocks wins the game. Eventually it gets to be uh, a bit more of a challenge than it is right now. As you try and rank up score, I am getting my butt kicked by the way, totally, <laughs> totally getting my butt kicked. But actually a neat game, and there's a lot of different uh, games that you can select from this that are slightly different from each other, so it's definitely worth a look. Here's Street Racer, a lovely, lovely game that I am horrible at. Press your button to accelerate. So again, this is what makes it so that you cannot play this two-player. And that is the fact that I need this button to accelerate. Which is kind of too bad. Come on. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is the point of the game. Go as fast as you can while avoiding oncoming traffic. I used to be really good at this when I was a kid. I could actually just floor this the entire way through. But now, I'm middle age. And number one, I can barely see the screen. And number two, I'm not as fast as I used to be. So let's go on. Welcome to Steeplechase, which is basically the devil's game. <sighs> so, I try to run as fast as I can and jump over these fences. This is the worst kind of equestrian abuse ever. Come on, am I gonna even get one? Am I gonna get one? No, I'm just not gonna do it. Clearly. Come on. Can I yes, I did it! I did one! 
Can you imagine what this horse is like after this race is over? Seriously. This is... This is abuse. Let's finish things up with the last game. And here we go with what I feel might be the very best game of the lot, which is Warlords. Sadly, I'm pretty sure you can only play it one player. You actually can play two-player Warlords on here. Uh, it's game number two. That'll allow you to do it. But you know what? It's still quite a bit of fun. Oh, come on. No, you're not killing my king. Oh, I'm not hitting very often. Boy, that top right player is barely taking any damage at all. Oh, wait. He just murdered himself. <laughs> Again, plays way better if it's in your lap. Ugh. No, you don't. One eliminated. Oh, no, don't. No, no. That ended it. Still, great freaking game. All right, so let's wrap it up. One thing that didn't really come through very well in this video is how nice and clear the screen is. It's not a perfect screen by any measure of the imagination, but it is actually very bright and clear. Uh, I was getting some syncing issues with my camera, and you can definitely see that in the playback, but that isn't really what you get on the screen. It is actually pretty nice. Uh, I think I mentioned as far as the controls go, though though they are nice, there's a little bit more throw than I thought there should be for the size of uh, the paddle controller itself. But it wasn't game ruining. I definitely played a lot better if I was holding the device than if I wasn't. Uh, also, not all the two-player games worked. They say that on the cover, though, that Pong's really the only one they officially say works. But I did find that a couple other games would work. But if the game requires a fire button, you've only got one fire button here. So you're going to be out of, uh, out of luck on that. But, you know, it's a nice little addition nonetheless. All in all, given the fit and finish, you can get these for around $30.00. And if you're a big Pong or Atari nut, it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, otherwise, it, you might want to pick up maybe an Atari flashback or something like that. But really cool little device and neat to play with. So I'll give it a thumbs up. Not for everybody, but definitely great for collectors. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.